listening to the My Pet Podcast, the show for pet lovers of Australia and around the world. Hi, thanks for tuning in to the My Pet Podcast. I'm Aria and I'm joined by our resident vet, Dr. Glenn. Hello. How are you going? Good. That's good. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're just giving um, general um, advice. Um, so it may or may not be specific to you and your dog. So if you have any questions or concerns specifically about your pet, have a chat to your vet. Sounds like the plan. Wonderful. So we're going to talk about ticks and tick products. Yep. Mainly tick products. So if um, people are wanting or concerned about if they need to use it or not, what to use, how to use it, why to use it. Yep. We're going to answer all that. Absolutely. So I guess let's start with... What are the types of ticks that we encounter with dogs in Australia? Yep, um, three main types. I mean, the paralysis tick is um, historically the most dangerous um, tick in Australia. Um, so it's uh, mostly on the east coast of Australia is the main um, topographical um, problem, basically. The paralysis tick causes paralysis. Mm. Um, it's got to be on there for a day or two or more to cause um, tick paralysis symptoms, but one tick is enough to kill any size dog, unfortunately, and um, you want to prevent them rather than to have to treat them, that's for sure. Yes. yes. And then there is brown dog ticks, yep. which despite common misconception, they don't just like brown dogs, they like dogs <laughs> that are all different <laughs> colours. Um, yeah, brown dog ticks, um, depending on where you live in Australia, definitely a very big problem. Um, tend to be a um, away from, well, the further you go away from the coast, the worse they are. The further okay. north they are, go the worse they are in general. Um, I'm in Brisbane as practice and, and I see very few brown dog ticks. Um, I've worked in Townsville, we see a lot. Worked in Catherine, used to see a hell of a lot um, yeah. up there. So it's it's not just an outback dog problem. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you have ever had them on your dog, you would know what they look like. Definitely they're um, quite small um, yeah. ticks, but they're just blood-sucking parasites basically. They um, like to get in between their toes and in their ears and uh, around their face and eyes and cause all sorts of horrible dermatitis troubles if you've got enough ticks. Um, yes. And they can suck enough blood to necessitate blood transfusions and that sort of thing, That's crazy. Um, which is really nasty. Yeah. Um, but they, equally as importantly, um, spread a couple of different um, blood-borne parasitic diseases that um, are potentially fatal for your dog as well. Yes, yes. Uh, such as ehrlichiosis, yep. which we did a whole other podcast about. So if you have questions or concerns about that, we address those in detail in yep. that podcast. So check that out. Yep. The abbreviated version is... You don't want your dog to get bitten by a brown dog tick because um, they could get this little blood-borne parasite that causes bruising and anemia and, and blood loss and hemorrhages and all sorts of horrible, nasty stuff. Yeah, um, very so, nasty. So um, it's just the single bite from an infected tick that can cause problems there. So that um, makes tick um, prevention and potentially repellency of ticks um, really, really important for mm. brown dog ticks. Yeah. Mm. And then there's the bush ticks. Yep. So bush ticks is just a, um, a term for um, any ticks that really aren't paralysis ticks and yeah. aren't brown dog ticks <laughs> in Australia. Um, most uh, There's lots of native ticks in Australia. There's 90 different species of native ticks depending on um, if you're an echidna or a wallaby or a hare, which isn't a native, but they've got their own ticks. Um, so there's lots of ticks running around in the bush that are living on other animals that mm -hmm. can incidentally um, get on your dog. Probably won't cause any troubles other than sometimes like some dermatitis troubles. They don't like living on dogs because they're not the normal host, um, but you'll still see ticks on there and sometimes they can cause like a skin reaction that sort of thing um, some people will confuse them for paralysis ticks mm -hmm. um, which isn't bad the worst thing would be is to confuse a paralysis tick for a bush tick and yes. think it's not a problem um, when it's a paralysis tick which is definitely is a problem yes yes definitely uh so um what we need to protect and prevent for these because they all have their own little ways of causing harm yes. to our puppy dogs. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, but also, I guess, when to do it, there seems to be a little bit of a misconception about what tick season, yep. quote unquote, actually means. Yes. So tell us, what, what what is your perspective on that? Like, can you explain that a bit? Depending on where you live, sometimes a year could be worse for paralysis ticks, as in, you would have a higher population of paralysis ticks circulating at any one time and um, potentially means that your 
local vet might see more tick paralysis cases usually in spring and summer mm-hmm. um, but it depends on the location again tropical north um, of australia there's ticks 365 days a year and the season doesn't really change that much yeah. um, some places the further you go south okay there is a seasonality as in there is more tick cases in spring and summer yeah. um, and it depends on how much it's been raining and lots of other climatic conditions but realistically um, at any one day if you live in an area where there are paralysis ticks, um, your dog could get a paralysis tick on that day, even if it's on the shortest day in winter. Yeah. Um, and if that happens and your dog isn't on prevention because it's not tick season, um, your dog gets tick paralysis and potentially dies. So that's a bad thing, obviously. Yeah. So keep them on prevention all year round if you've got um, exposure to an area that's that's got ticks. Yeah. So the tick season is really just when they're most prevalent most prevalent. But they're always around. Always around. Um, always and I lurking. recommend all year round prevention. They're more likely in tick season, but you can still get paralysis ticks any time of the year, so just keep it up all year. Yeah. yeah. And the, the range of paralysis ticks is moving around as well, isn't it? Seems, it seems to be moving further south, like um, suburban Melbourne. Yeah. There's been a few cases, and it used to be that they used to have to go up into um, sort of further north of Melbourne. Um, I haven't practised um, down south um, in clinical practice, but the, the geographical range and the geographical severity of tick paralysis seems to be increasing, and, and is that people being more mobile with their pets? Yeah. Is that, um, you know, residential areas encroaching into bushland more? You know, all those things are probably interacting, but it's... Um, they're certainly not getting less paralysis ticks, it's getting more. Yeah, when I, f- when I first started nursing, um, it was in um, rural Victoria. Yep. And I did not see a tick paralysis case until I moved to Queensland. Yep. Um, but um, the folks I used to work with down there said that it's, they're seeing them Absolutely. now. So. And, and the Exodes species, which is the, um, the type of um, tick that causes tick paralysis, I mean, it's spread by the bandicoot, um, but there's a couple of different species within that um, Exodes range that um, do cause paralysis as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's basically if your dog goes outside um, and has exposure to the ground and the grass anywhere in eastern Queensland, mm. sorry, eastern Australia, um, yeah, ticks are a potential. Yes. Paralysis ticks are a potential. You've just touched on, I guess, another like little myth buster is that um, people often think that if they have like a wee little patch of grass in their unit in the city that, that it's not a worry, yep. um, that it's only out in the bush, but they can absolutely be absolutely anywhere. And, and it's all... Um, the likelihood is less if your dog only goes to the little grass patio area downstairs um, and you're in suburbia than if your dog goes running through the bush every day. But that doesn't mean that your little bit of grass isn't exposed to bandicoots that live, you know, 500 metres down the road and run around at 2 o'clock in the morning as bandicoots do and, and drop off a few um, paralysis sticks when they're digging up your lawn grubs in your little manicured bit of lawn. <laughs> um, but if you walk your dog down the park down the road like it's not just where you live yeah um, but yes i've had plenty of cases of people that um have got inside dogs and the dog only goes out behind the back door and goes to the toilet and then comes back inside again they still get tick paralysis yeah. so i mean they've got them from um migrating bandicoots that come through yeah yeah um and i guess another thing is that um like the cost benefit analysis of treatment versus prevention absolutely like obviously in terms of risk the risk of harm from a tick is much greater than the risk of harm from a prevention medication is that right absolutely and i mean risk risk and cost so i mean uh, if you're looking at tick paralysis um i mean every tick paralysis case that i treat doesn't necessarily go home unfortunately like it's a nasty disease even if you treat it appropriately even if you get them early on you still get you know occasional fatalities from heart troubles and stuff like that so it's um if you never have to treat it that is by far better Um, and the likelihood of an adverse um, reaction to a paralysis tick prevention um, is far lower than the likelihood of getting tick paralysis and and causing health issues on that front yeah Um, yeah i mean it's occasionally um and we'll go through the different types of medications one of the classes of um, long-acting tick control um in pets that get epilepsy or or epileptic dogs it is contraindicated in those in those pets Mm -hmm. so um that class of medication um you shouldn't give to pets that uh, get epilepsy and if they 
were already going to develop epilepsy and they have that medication, it could lower their seizure threshold. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, there has been isolated cases of, of pets having seizures on um, medication, but were they going to have a seizure anyway yeah. or is it the medication? And, and it could be the medication, but I in clinical practice I'm yet to see an adverse effect from um, a preventative yep. um, but I see up to 200 cases of tick paralysis a year and wow. um, if I saw 200 cases of tick paralysis I'd probably lose 5 or 10 of them um, as in they, they have a fatal infection yeah. um, and that's the ones that I see it's not the ones that die before I see them or, or don't yeah. get treatment so um, the likelihood of an adverse effect from the medication is extremely low yeah 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 and that, like, that's why it's important to have a chat to your dog's treating vet if you have these concerns because they will have the best idea about um, what's the right the right way to go for your dog yeah and, and there is multiple options as well and, yeah absolutely and, um, that class of medication i mean there are other preventions that are still effective um at preventing uh tick exposure um when you're avoiding that those systemic medications if, yeah. if you've got um yeah, if you're adverse to using those but even the the financial cost of like I, I think that you could treat you could prevent sorry you could do prevent prevention for a dog for almost the dog's whole life correct for what it would cost to do Potentially just one treatment. Correct. Financially, yeah. but I mean, I mean, it's going to be yeah. You know, if you less than thousand dollars for treating a tick case, it's it's pretty mild, or or if it's not charging that much, um, versus you know five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand for a, a really sick um, paralysis tick patient. Um, so that's the paralysis tick side of things, and um, the ehrlichiosis side of things up in the Northern mm. Territory and top in the WA. I mean, there's literally several hundred dogs have died um, from uh, ehrlichiosis in the last two years um, since, wow. it's, since it's been um, encroached into Australia um, and, they, and we've started looking for it and they're getting cases in you know, Alice Springs and Catherine and Darwin mm. and, and the top end of WA where dogs are getting repeatedly infected, like wow. they'll, they'll get infected and they'll treat them and it is treatable if you get it early enough through medication but again, you know, testing and, and ongoing medication um, and it, it's, you know, it's a significantly fatal infection. But even with, you know, like you were saying earlier, the blood transfusions, that's not... Oh, I mean, it's... I mean, I've seen dogs with 400 ticks in one year. I mean, oh. it's not pleasant. No, it's yeah, not. It's not. No very, one wants, not no one nice wants to dogs. go through this. No. <laughs> no one wants to go through this. It's awful. Yeah. Um, so that is why there are stacks of great products to prevent Absolutely. having to go through any of this horrible stuff. So let's get into it. How how do these products work? There's a few different types. Yep. So there's there's ones that kill the ticks. Yep. And then there's ones that repel the ticks. Yep. And the ones that repel the ticks also kill the ticks as well. Oh, um, okay. But, but have got um, repellency as part of their registration as well. Yeah, cool. Yep. So what are the ones that do the repelling? So repelling, it's basically uh, synthetic pyrethrin, and that's either in the Seresto collar um, or... Um, Advantix, which is one of the top spots, which mm -hmm. has got synthetic pyrethrin in it. That's the two medications that are registered for repelling ticks. Mm -hmm. um, and it also kills ticks if they hang around for long enough to get the dose of the medication enough to kill the tick, but but it does actually um, repel them as well, which is really important for the early chiosis side of things because yes. you don't want that tick to bite at all to potentially um, pass on that bacteria. Yeah. Um, and obviously if the tick is repelled, if it's a paralysis tick, well, that's better than it ever getting on the body in the first place. Um, but if that tick isn't repelled enough, it's still killed by the medication as well. Yeah. Yep. And then the ones that just do the killing, Yep. Um, so they um, tend to, um, so they kill a little bit, faster than the ones that repel or not necessarily so depending on the product um, a lot of the newer ones um the top spots newer ones yes they kill the ticks like significantly faster as in within an hour or two um and certainly within 24 hours which is 99.5 percent of the time fast enough to kill a paralysis tick before it causes paralysis problems okay. um, because the toxin's got to be um, injected into the system in a high enough amount to cause paralysis yeah yeah but you still got to kill the tick fast enough to stop it causing paralysis yeah yeah and that's where using a product like this as a prevention is absolutely the way to go yep um because once that tick by the time any uh, uh, an owner has noticed a tick or like a paralysis tick on their dog is there anything that people can do by after that stage to 
Look, if you find a tick on your dog, um, I would recommend taking the tick and the dog to the vet. Yes. Um, preferably removing the tick first um, and um, get the t- tick identified as to, okay, what it is. Because just if you remove the tick, that doesn't necessarily mean the tick's not going to cause tick paralysis problems because of the toxin that it's already injected. Yeah. You can pull a tick off now and that dog might be clinically normal now, might be clinically normal the next day, but up to 48 hours later you can still see an increasing um, symptoms and, and becoming paralysed. Yeah. So um, if you want to take, okay, remove it, um, but seek professional help. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, and if you have this kind of prevention on board, it makes that whole journey a lot less stressful, I imagine. Correct. <laughs> um, and a lot of time, like with the systemic medications that kill the ticks in situ, as in on the dog, sometimes you'll see like a little shriveled up, dried, mm. dead tick. Um, and sometimes they're sort of shriveled up and, and unhealthy looking in the when they're in the process of dying. So it doesn't stop the ticks getting on there, but you'll still um, occasionally see a tick on there, but they won't get engorged and they yeah. won't um, go on to cause paralysis. Yeah. 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 So is there any, um, like the, with the different types of, of product, yep. is there any that are better than others in terms of you've got chews versus spot-ons versus um, your collars and then your rinses and shampoos? Yep. So, I mean, the rinses and shampoos, rinses, the Fido's free itch rinse, concentrate, you um, wet your dog down, leave it on there um, to dry and it lasts for three days, residual effect, kills whatever fleas are on there, sorry, whatever ticks are on there. Mm -hmm. The shampoos, um, they'll kill the ticks that are on there but you wash the shampoo off and it doesn't have any residual effect other than treating your dog um, if you've found a tick or you've just been to a high tick burden area or something like that washing them doesn't really make much sense because it doesn't doesn't last for long enough yeah so um look it's got a small place and and running through hydro baths to kill whatever ticks are on dogs that we're treating for tick paralysis we do that pretty regularly um but it's not my choice for prevention because it just doesn't last for long enough and it's not practical that you're gonna do something to your dog that often realistically Yeah. yeah And what about the collars? So the collars, um, there's a couple of different collars that kill ticks. I mean, the Soresto is the longest acting one Mm -hmm. um, and that um, kills fleas and ticks um, for an extended period on the dog. Um, It's not a systemic medication, so it stays on the outside um, of the pet. So if Mm -hmm. you're concerned about um, ongoing, um, like, chemicals basically in the system, um, that's the way to go. Yeah. And then there's um, the... Top spot or spot on versus the chews. Yep. Is there any difference between those two methods? Uh, there's a difference as in how you give them and there's a difference in oh, how, how, sorry, long, how, how long they last for. <laughs> um, so the Brevecto top spot lasts for six months um, from a single application. So that's like a pretty long period, yeah. obviously. Um, some dogs don't like eating chewy treats and, yes. they're, and they're you know palatable treats and um, most pets like the palatable treats. Um, as a way of getting the medication in but some people don't like that and some dogs don't like that so um i mean the top spots versus the chews they're equally as effective as far Mm -hmm. as how they work um the top spot um makes sense yeah for long periods basically and for for dogs that don't like eating chewy stuff basically yes um the chewy ones i mean for most pets is um a, a good way to do it and it really depends on when you're looking at um what medication you're using some of them are just fleas and ticks and some of them are, are longer um, acting. This in the Brecto top spot lasts for six months, but that does fleas and ticks. Um, but there's also the next garden, Simparica, that do, well, Simparica Trio does combination of fleas, ticks, and heartworm and intestinal worm. So it depends yeah. on what combination of insecticide or control that you need. Um, but it's really the, the top spots are, are very effective if they're the newer ones. The yeah. um, frontline Advantix, um, it, it's always per the box recommendation. Um, frontline top spot and Advantix, you've got to do every two weeks um, mm. as a top spot. It's monthly for fleas, but two weeks for ticks. Yeah. So. You know, that's that's reasonably often as far as the, the top spot goes as opposed to a top spot that lasts for, you know, either a month or six months. Yeah. Yeah, so it just depends on which one you want to use really. And there's yeah. so many products now where this is part of, you know, they cover paralysis tick. Well, the, sorry, they cover – there's so many products that prevent ticks as well as a range of other that's things. Right. So you it's got, really got, easy to work it in. Combination there. Yeah. Yep. And just because a product has – um you know, it covers and prevents ticks doesn't mean you can't use it Correct. for all of its other benefits Correct. as well. Uh, I guess the only thing with that is if something covers heartworm, you need a heartworm test first. Yes, um, and consult your vet about that. Yes. Yeah. And so um, with 
with these using a preventative um it is also a good idea to regularly check your dog over right nothing's 100 percent in the prevention world um i mean the new preventions are not nine and a half percent i mean they're very very effective but um there is still the possibility for the odd um, paralysis stick to slip through the safety net basically um so if you're talking about tick paralysis the recommendation is still thoroughly examine your pet daily um all over for um, paralysis ticks essentially and that's I mean it's really hard and it's it's easy for us to say to do that and most of the on label recommendations um, suggest to um, thoroughly examine your dog daily for paralysis ticks and you've really got to systematically yeah. work your fingers through their hair um, all over their body I mean the head and neck is the primary spot where paralysis ticks get on but they can be anywhere underneath their gums and in prep uses and all sorts of weird places um, so thorough checking is a very good idea but very good prevention on board 24-7, 365 days a year is probably a lot more effective than thorough daily checks because they're just so hard to find. Yes, especially if you have a big hairy dog like Correct. I do. Yeah. Who loves to run around in the long grass <laughs> where the bandicoot's going. Yeah. Um, and as far as the you know bloodborne parasite, ehrlichiosis sort of things goes, the bite of the tick is the problem. And yes, the longer the tick's there, the more it bites them and the higher the potential risk of infection. But you don't want that tick to attach to your dog in the first place. So yeah. um, examining them, it, it's not too late because if you find a tick like you found a tick and you can remove it, but um, having good long-term prevention in, in the early chiosis areas, um, using probably two methods of prevention, the, the long-term yeah. topical or oral systemic medications to kill ticks very quickly, but also the Soresto collar to repel the ticks as well mm -hmm. would, would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think we've covered everything. If you have any further questions, have a chat to your vet. I hope this has helped give you some information about how to choose a product to prevent ticks for your dog and, and why you should do that and um, different ways of, of going about it all. Yep. And, um, yeah, I hope you and your puppy dog stay nice and safe from nasty ticks. And thanks for watching and listening. Stay out of trouble. Thanks. Bye. See you.